Hey guys, Meet Reynolds, Chris Tomer here with this morning mountain weather update. Let me take you to Utah first. Snow Basin up there reporting about a foot of snow in the last 24 hours. We're in the storm handoff period now, where we're kind of in between storms in Utah. Next one comes in with an Arctic front tomorrow. All right, let me take you into Colorado. So this is Aspen snow mass, picked up four or five inches of snow maybe six overnight. You can see it's snowing and it's blowing there now. So this storm system now moving through Colorado and New Mexico today. Um, the snow will come to an end from north to south this afternoon. Still could pick up another two or three inches at Aspen Snowmass, but then we're in that storm handoff with the next storm system um, coming in tomorrow and the snow will pick back up over Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado. All right, let me take in my, my bullet points here and show you um, what I'm thinking. So here's the latest. Today is storm transition day for Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado. With the next one coming in tomorrow in the form of an Arctic front, 112 through 115, it'll have strong aura graphics, really going to drop the temps. They're going to be running 30 to 50 degrees below the norm. That'll push the snow ratios up, a lot of efficiency in the atmosphere. It will also deliver, in fact, both jets We'll deliver a jet blast 112 and 113 to Utah, Wyoming, and Colorado with 70 mile an hour wind gusts coming. It'll rake the high peaks and really push up the avalanche risk. Um, that jet blast again through the 13th. Storm system, a next one comes in on 116 to 119. That'll also deliver somewhat of a northwest flow orientation. So that's going to benefit some mountain ranges like the Tetons in particular. I'll show you what that storm system looks like coming up. And then in the northeast, so you've got a next, the next storm on deck is 112 to 113. That one kind of looks like the one that just went through. It's powerful. The 116 to 117 storm had a lot of potential, but now the track continues to shift to the south, pulling the heavy snow away from Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Promising, though, another storm on 119, 120 could make up for that with a better track and heavy snow potential. So I'll show you what all that looks like coming up in just a few. All right, let me show you what the forecast radar and satellite look like. So that's the situation by this afternoon. Notice a couple of things. You can see the gap in between storm systems. The one in Colorado, New Mexico will be moving out. Here comes the next one in from the north with an Arctic front. Watch what happens overnight into tomorrow. So all that snow continues to nail the Tetons, parts of Idaho, Montana, and it's dropping into the Wasatch. And then here we are on 112 at 4 p.m. We're getting blasted by high winds in the Wasatch, the Tetons, and in the central and northern mountains of Colorado. Heavy snow potential continuing into Saturday 113. That focal point, that boundaries draped over the Wasatch and over the central and northern mountains of Colorado. We may see snow squalls on Friday and Saturday in Utah and Colorado as a result of this boundary. The main storm system is on the back side. It's moving down through Oregon. Oregon's going to get walloped again, uh, 111, 112, and 113 with high winds and heavy snow. Watch the low come down through Shasta, Tahoe, and it hits Mammoth as well. And then the low makes its way in to the interior state. So this is 114. Low's getting ready to move into Utah. It's going to push all that snow into Colorado and New Mexico and eclipse the Tetons again. This is 114 in the afternoon. There's your storm system departing late 114. Now, what we're seeing on the back side, watch it into 115 in the afternoon. That's just part of that Arctic front moving out. Now, 116 and one, late 116, we're watching for that next storm system dropping down from British Columbia into the Pacific Northwest. This is the one that could set up that Northwest flow, 116 through 119, and it will include Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, and probably brushes the, the Wasatch, and it will come down and follow the jet into the central and northern mountains of Colorado with snow potential. Let me show you a couple of things. So this, that's 116. Here's 117. There it is on 117. You can see the snow moving down. Um, into Idaho and Montana. Here's 118 with snow clipping, um, the Wasatch still hitting the Teton squarely, and now that snow being dumped down into the central and northern mountains of Colorado. Here's the jet pattern. So this is tomorrow. Two jets co-located, northern branch, subtropical branch, um, and just heavy snow generation with that Arctic front coming down and a lot of wind across uh, Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado. Here's 114. So on 114, you can kind of see where there's 
That storm system moving through uh, Utah, Colorado, and New Mexico, that'll be moving away by uh, 115 and be out of here. And then we'll start to transition and watch for that 116 to 119 storm. In fact, here's the jet on 117. You can already see that amplification and that northwest orientation, bringing that snow into Montana, Idaho, Wyoming, eventually Utah and Colorado. And let me just go further down the road. So this is 120. 120 is kind of in between with the finality of that northwest flow moving out and waiting on what's next. And you can see there's a powerful jet coming out of the Pacific on 120. We'll see what that eventually does, but things could turn active again as a result of that. All right, let's talk wind. So this is Friday, wind gusts at 2 p.m., 50 to 70 mile an hour winds across basically the entire continental divide of Colorado, from Vail all the way in, Aspen, Snowmass, everybody gets this wind. And again, 50 to 70 mile an hour winds. That's Friday at 2. Here's Saturday at 5 a.m. It is still exceptionally windy with 40 to 60 to 70 mile an hour wind gusts. And that, uh, that, that tan or white color is 60 plus. So that's still blowing hard over Saturday. And that's why I think Friday and Saturday we could have snow squalls in Utah and also in Colorado over the mountainous terrain. All right, let me talk a bit about snowfall. So here's my grand total map um, today through the 20th, and this accounts for, you know, essentially um, the rest of this storm and then the next two coming in after it. So still looking for big numbers in uh, Little Cottonwood, another 60 inches on the way at least, and another 50 on the way, Big Cottonwood, three feet for Park City, Snow Basin, and Deer Valley. I'm looking for about a foot coming in the Sierra. In Colorado, one to three feet on the way with that powerful flow. Um, about two feet on the way for the Tetons within this period. Uh, one to two feet for Idaho, northwest Montana. Still a lot of snow yet to go for Mount Bachelor. Like I said, you're going to get crushed over three days. And look at that big snow for the Pacific Northwest, B.C. and interior B.C. over Revelstoke and Kicking Horse. Um, that third storm, 116 to 119, can really be a doozy for that area. Let's break it down by period. Um, first of all, I want to go into Colorado, just zooming in on that grand total map. I-70 corridor north, this is where we could see a couple of feet, <clears throat> maybe more up over Steamboat and Buff Pass, but this will be a very good period. All right, let's break it down by period. So today through the 12th, Again, kind of a handoff happening now, but by the time we get into tomorrow, all the numbers go back up. So potentially, you know, we could start to see the numbers go to one to two feet um, in the, uh, the Wasatch and in Colorado, looking for probably four to eight inches, eight to 12 inches for the Tetons and big snow for Mount Bachelor. Here's, the, here's a big period. This is 113 to 115, essentially capturing that Arctic front. Uh, another couple of feet for, for parts of the Wasatch, maybe three feet over Alta and Snowbird. It's just going to be a huge period. Big powder, high avalanche potential. And in Colorado, one to two feet during those uh, 113 to 115, that time period alone, about a foot for the, uh, the Sierra, and another 20 for Mount Bachelor. All right, here's the final period. This is that 116 to 119 storm with that northwest orientation. That's why I said it could be a doozy up in B.C. Look at the, again, any time you see the purple magenta, that's over a foot. And in some cases, we're seeing two to three feet of accumulation during that time frame with that storm system alone. You can see how it brushes the Wasatch and drops down into the central and northern mountains of Colorado. All right, let's go up to the northeast. A couple of notes here. So your next storm is 112 to 113. It's very similar to the one that just went, uh, went through there. You're going to have heavy snow and 70 mile an hour winds at the onset, changing over to a rain snow mix. That'll cut down on that, that tail end of that storm accumulation. Um, the 116, 117, I've sort of just ruled it out. It's too far to the south now. But where you see a lot of these totals now, they come from a 119 to 120 storm potential. That's way out there, and I'm sure it's going to shift around. So we'll keep an eye on that. But that's the way it looks right now. All right, let me go back, and we'll end on the grand total map. 111 through 120. Again, a lot of snow yet to go for many mountain ranges of the west. This is definitely a big period. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. I always appreciate it. Take care.